Hello, my name is Seppi and welcome back to the Space Exploration Agency. Today we will launch several missions to the moon and we will begin with a communication satellite that will be positioned in a high polar orbit so that I can communicate with spacecraft on the far side of the moon. Alrighty then, let's get started. Let's switch on SES, adjust the throttle and in 3, 2, 1 and lift off, lift off for the Comsat 1B, the first communication satellite heading for the moon. Yeah, this is looking good. This is looking so amazing. I uh, like nighttime launches and we can begin our gravity turn. Nighttime launches are also so special because you launch in the darkness and then once you are in orbit, you approach the orbital sunrise very quickly and this is really amazing when as soon as you can look down to a curve and you are suddenly back in the sunlight and this is really fantastic. And speaking about fantastic things, look at this. There is the mirror and there is our destination. That's a really a fantastic fantastic moment to launch a moon bound spacecraft when we can see the moon at the sky. This is amazing. Okay, I think I can throttle down a bit because I am accelerating quite fast. Alright, I can throttle down a bit and I can expedite my gravity turn. This is really a beautiful view over to the moon. This is amazing. This is so fantastic. Once again, I am really amazed by Kerbal Space Program. This is so beautiful. This is so amazing. And don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Let's get back to the 45 degree marker on the nav ball. All right. Very good. Very good. We are already at 20 kilometers. This is amazing. This standard space launch system is really powerful and I'm just using the central core booster. I am not using the two SRBs and still this thing is so amazing, so powerful. Alright, 30 kilometers we can turn over to the 25 degree marker. Alright, looking good. Looking very, very good. Wow, we are quite fast. Let's have a look at our trajectory. How are we doing? I like to go for a... Okay, I think I can turn over to 20 degrees and stop. All right, yeah, I like to go once again for a 100 kilometer apoapsis for a 100 kilometer orbit. And from there, I will begin my flight to the moon. Okay, fantastic. Then, as I said, we will launch several missions to the moon. We will also launch the second moon base or rover we will need for the moon mining facility. Also, I will launch, uh, well, some communication packages basically, because last time as I launched the Supply Mark 5 spacecraft, I found out I have new antennas on it and so I need to um, you know, deliver an antenna package to the Supply Mark 5 spacecraft. Also, the moon base landers have new antennas, so I need to launch another COM package to the moon and I need to launch a third one to Minmus because the good old Supply Mark 5 spacecraft that is currently docked to the Minmus space station has also a new antenna and that's of course not oh wait we are now in space so I can do this perfect all right and uh, as I said we are shortly before orbital sunrise as soon as we are in the sun I will talk about the satellite it's well the same satellite more or less there hasn't been so many changes to the design of the satellite and to the... where do we have our first ComSat? Um, wow, so many... I think it's this one? ComSat 1A, yes. This is the, the first communication satellite in a circular 2000 kilometer orbit around Kerbin. And wow, it looks, it looks so busy, it looks so busy. So yeah, um, we have at least three... well, two more launches coming up and um, yeah I'm excited I'm really excited about this especially I am looking forward to the launch of the communication package because this is a 
basically a triple launch. And that's all the time amazing, that's all the time fantastic. So let's start with our orbit insertion drone. I can get rid of this thing. And yeah, you can... Yeah, orbital sunrise, orbital sun, wow, that's fantastic. Look at this. Uh, okay, this is quite hard to get right, but this looks fantastic. We are performing our orbit insertion drone at orbital sunrise. Ooh, yeah, we are getting quite fast. I need to... Monitor this. Okay, apoapsis in one minute and 16 seconds. So let's add a maneuver there again. We can coast a bit and yeah, the central crew booster will run out of fuel pretty soon. This is good. So I hope it will not enter an orbit. Wow, this, this is really what I was talking about. Okay, while we are waiting to get to the apoapsis, um, as you can see, it's basically the same design. I just removed this one extendable antenna. This thing has only this RA15 relay antenna. And I hope, I really hope that um, I don't need a second antenna on the satellite in order to communicate with Kerbin. I hope this will work like this. Um, yeah, we will see. We will see if this this will work out or if this will cause some issues. Uh, I'm not so sure how exactly this whole communication system works. So I am uh, basically learning as I go. And so, okay, we are getting closer to the... Let's continue the burn and... Okay, we are out of fuel. This is perfect. So we can jettison this one. Then we have this engine coming up. Very good. So let's... Let's insert and stop. All right, 102 by 118. Okay, a little bit an eccentric orbit, but that's all right. The destination is the moon. I still have to think about how I can approach the moon so that I can enter an orbit and a polar orbit right away. But I will find out. Yeah, I think I will do some mid course, mid mid flight changes. All right, um, we have a perfect orbit, only 0.1 degrees off, this is good. So um, I think we can perform the burn somewhere around here. Let's see. Let's see. All right, Udia, this is a bit much. Okay, um, we need to... So this is somewhat weird, why is this so weird? You have your moon encounter there. Something is strange. Why is this so strange? Why do we have so many so many markers there? Okay, let's see, let's see. Do I have a moon encounter or do I have no moon encounter. I'm confused. Very confused. There we have a... Huh? I don't get it. Moon periapsis of... Okay. Noon period is 128 kilometers. Yeah, let's let's go for this, and then we will have a carbon escape. Interesting. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's let's go for this. Coming up in eight minutes. In eight minutes. So um, we have the. Yeah, I think those solar panels should be enough. And I hope during the flight out to the moon, the relay antenna will also work as a normal communication device, so that I don't need to have. Uh, a second antenna on my spacecraft. We will see. I hope this is the way how the thing will work out. Other, well, well, if not, then we have a problem and we will enter, well, an interplanetary trajectory or so when we can't c uh, control the spacecraft anymore. All right, um, let's get Udia. This thing is quite easy to handle. This is good. All right, here we go. Let's fly the satellite out to the moon. Well, the small little upper stage is quite powerful. That's cool. 
All right. And stop. Okay, just a bit more. And the moon is rising. Amazing. All right, let's stop it here. So how are we doing? Um, 221 kilometers. All right, this is good. Um, I need to change this at some point during the flight. So I will get there, hopefully. So, okay, the first spacecraft is en route to the moon. So let's go back to the space center and launch the second spacecraft. The second spacecraft will be the second moon base rover. It's the exact same moon base rover we have um, right at the new moon base, but this second moon base rover will be deployed right next to the moon mining facility we have to land. So um, moon base rover, moon base rover launch. I think this is this spacecraft. So let's launch the vessel. All right, here we are at the launch pad with the Muon Mining Facility rover. It's basically the same design as the Muon Base rover. The only difference is that I have added an antenna to it, as this mission is intended to be a robotic mission, and so there won't be cosmonauts around all the time that can jump into the seats and drive the rover around. But I left the seats on it in case a cosmonaut visits the Muon Mining Facility and likes to drive around with the rover. So it's here more or less the same design but as it is a robotic mission, it needs to be able to communicate with the deep space network. And here, so I think we are now ready for liftoff. Um, the payload is unfortunately everything but aerodynamically stable and so I will burn straight up until I am out of the thicker parts of the atmosphere before I will begin my gravity turn because yeah otherwise it might cause some issues having this payload that is not encapsulated in a fairing. And yeah, I think we are now ready for launch. Um, what is going on down here? I think I need to control from here. Yeah, this is better. So SAS on and just the throttle. And in three, two, one. And lift off, lift off for the Muon mining facility rover heading for the moon. All right. Those, I opted for the smaller SRBs, but they are apparently not as powerful. They are definitely not as powerful as the huge, the gigantic SRBs. But uh, that's all right. That's all right. We are now heading for space. We are shooting into the sky. And wow, this looks this looks fantastic. Uh, those SRBs are all the time amazing for nighttime launches. They are powerful, they are loud, they are bright. They are basically the pure essence of rocket launches. So, all right, we can now jettison them. They have completed their job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your work. And yeah, we can continue our ascent into higher altitudes. We can continue our ascent into space. And okay, we are out of the most sickest parts of the atmosphere. This is good. All right, 10 kilometer. I think I can slowly begin the gravity turn. Let's do it very, very easy. Oh dear, easy, 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 easy. Oh dear. Um, yep, yep, yep. The payload, the payload, the payload is, uh, the payload is everything but easy to handle. Come on, easy, easy, easy. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. We are, we are, we're getting there, we're getting there. That's good. Oh, wow. I hope this is the last rover of this design I have to launch. Oh dear, this is... Ha! Huh. Okay, okay. Looking good, looking good. I think we have full control again, as we are almost out of the atmosphere. Okay, let's turn over to the 30 degree marker, as we have crossed the 30 kilometer altitude and once again I like to head for yeah we have a very steep trajectory so I like to head for a uh, 100 kilometer orbit who wow this was stressful this was stressful indeed this crazy ooh and we are getting closer to orbital sunrise this is cool this is fantastic all right wow huh, this was uh, for a short moment I thought okay I'm losing it that's it this thing will 
tumble out of control, but luckily I made it. Luckily I survived this. So, okay, um, one minute and 52 seconds to go. Then we are at our apoapsis and we can begin the orbit insertion burn soon. We will have orbital sunrise. This is amazing. This is perfect. So let's warp and orbital sunrise. Wow, this is cute. This is... This is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of the episode, that nighttime launches are fantastic because then you get into the sun while well, you launch in the darkness and then you get into the, the bright sunlight. So this is all the time cool. I think I will begin, oh yeah, I need to begin the burn now as the core booster will run out of fuel pretty soon, I guess. Okay, I don't need you anymore. Yep, we are out of fuel, so let's jettison you and let's start you. Okay, I hope. I hope we can get into orbit in time. Alright. Let's engage to the brakes. The constantly turning wheels are a little bit weird. Alright. We're getting there. Definitely getting there. Okay, getting closer to orbital velocity. I'm a little bit concerned about the amount of fuel left in the upper stage, but I hope this is still enough fuel to fly out. Okay. I think I can stop it here for now and wait that I get closer to the apoapsis because I don't want to enter into an eccentric orbit. So let's do a quick time warp, get closer to the maneuver node. All right. And let's finish the orbit insertion burn. All right, easy. And here we go. Right, are there the periapsis? And we are in orbit. Fantastic. Okay. Now we need to set course for the moon. We are oh, 0.7. A little bit off. Um, this is maybe... I think the, the perfect moment could be around here. So maybe we have to do a mid-course correction burn. Let's see. Yes, looking good. Periapsis 444, 246. Can I get this a little bit closer? 162. Yeah, I think I will do some mid cross correction burns. This is looking good. This is looking fantastic. Okay, next maneuver coming up in nine minutes. Uh, 831 meters per second of delta V burn. I hope, I hope the fuel is enough to complete this uh, burn. Let's let's see. I think we should be able to do this. All right. Let's turn the spacecraft around. Aim for the maneuver node. And um, yeah, let's start the transmuna injection burn. The moon is rising. There's our destination. We are flying, or we are delivering the. Moon Mining Facility Rover to the moon. That's awesome. That's great. Okay. In the worst case, we still have our RCS to do some some changes to our trajectory. The most important thing is that we get captured in an orbit around the moon. And from there we can always do other things. So, okay. We are now en route to the moon. We have some fuel left. This fuel should be enough to perform our oh dear, um, capture burn. Yes. 107 kilometers, moon periapsis. This is looking good. This is awesome. Okay. The next mission is en route to the moon. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Do I need to do? Yes. I like to extend this antenna. So no, I hope we have all the time communication with the Deep Space Network. And speaking of communication, it's now time to launch the third mission for today, the Triple Launch. 
I like now to launch the communication modules. Maybe we need to wait a bit that I can launch the or that I have the launch window to rendezvous right away with the supply spacecraft mark 5 and I like to launch the com modules indeed I like to launch this a spacecraft so let's say a launch vessel all right here we are oh it's shortly before sunrise the we can't see the sky uh, the stars anymore and the horizon is getting brighter that's beautiful that's amazing it's an interesting shaped payload fairing okay let's see we are here and the supply mark 5 is over there um yeah i think we can enjoy the sunrise before we will launch let's see let's let's enjoy the wait let's enjoy this in this perspective also this could be amazing all right horizon is getting brighter and brighter that's cool all right wow fantastic okay let's oh there, there's the sun there's the sun we see the the sun coming up when uh okay the supply ship is approaching us but we still have enough time to enjoy the real sunrise come on come on wow the sun has risen this is amazing this is spectacular that's cool i like it Cool. All right. Now I'm happy. Now we can wait a little bit longer with our launch until we are more or less aligned with the Supply Mark V spacecraft. Okay, this could be now a good opportunity. So let's set this as a target and get ready for the launch. Okay, I like to reduce the throttle, switch on SES, and in three two one and a lift off a lift off for the com module mission heading for space one mission will remain in low curve in orbit one mission will fly out to the moon and the last mission will fly out to minmus so oh, this is a really a fantastic launch and yeah we can begin our gravity turn right away because this time we have once again our payload encapsulated in the fairing and so oh, this is indeed aerodynamically stable the sun is um, ascending the sun is higher in the sky as we are also shooting into the sky and yeah this time i'm using the most powerful configuration of my standard space launch system because i like to have some fuel left in the upper stage although this is well i think this is not that efficient i think it's really a waste of resources what i'm doing here when i really think about this because the upper stage will remain in low carbon orbit and will fall back into the atmosphere um, but well, it looks good, it looks spectacular, and sometimes we just need to enjoy um, those amazing things. So, thank you so much, SRBs, and I can now expedite uh, the gravity turn. Good. Alright, down there the second runway. This looks fantastic. Oh, and I need to speed up the gravity turn a lot. Okay. Already at 27 kilometers. That's very, uh, it's really a powerful launcher. And okay, now let's turn over to the 25 degree marker. We can see the stars. And I think we are way ahead of the supply ship. So I think I need to launch into a higher orbit a little bit of higher orbit so that i can wait that the supply ship is catching up with us let's see let's see yes we are way ahead of it so let's go maybe for a uh, 100 and 10 apoapsis or so yeah, let's go for 110 kilometers. This is good. I can go from there and get a good rendezvous. Okay. Let's 
one. I like to add a maneuver there at the peri at the apoapsis. Very good. And we are in space, so let's adjust the staging so that I can reveal the payload. And here we go. Haha. -ha. This time I remember to enable the setting that the fairing will fall apart like this. And here we are. You can see those are the communication modules. It's basically the same design as I had for the new thermal control system for the Mining Lander Mark 1. It's the same um, thug, basically. The same uh, space tuck, basically. And up here I have a small fuel tank with an antenna on it. And so I just need to dock those modules to the spacecraft in order to um, here, give them the capability of communicating with the deep space network. This is good. This is fantastic. And it's a triple launch. This is looking interesting. This is looking really amazing. So the upper stage will remain in low carbon orbit. As, yeah, I've, each spacecraft will be released in low carbon orbit and then start to fly out to its destination. So, speaking of destination, we need to get to the apoapsis and insert the spacecraft into an orbit. We don't have a marker for our target, so we are way ahead of it. All right. Let's begin the orbit insertion burn. Good. A little bit late. And we're out of fuel, so let's say goodbye and start the upper stage. All right. Oh, there, there's our target. 88 kilometers away from us. Looking good. Looking very good. We are about to enter an orbit. We are almost there. Okay. And can I go for a direct rendezvous? Not really. Okay, I have two there. Okay, we will have a rendezvous somewhere over here. Let's continue a little bit with the burn. Okay, down to 20 kilometers. Well, that's good. I think I can do the rest with was one of those uh, spacecraft that will deliver the communication module. This is, this is fantastic, this is great. But I will do this in the next episode because this will be a lot of planning and a lot of work. So before we will end and conclude this episode, I'd just like to switch back to the ComSat 1B, our communication satellite for the moon. And just like to see or check a few things. Um, Let's focus on the moon. Okay, I like to have... How do I... Do this at best. I like to have some kind of polar orbit. Then the next difficulty is I like to have... Um, that the orbit is basically going through those two points um, so that the satellite is all the time facing towards the moon and I'm not sure how to... what would happen if I do this later? Or should I have done this a little bit earlier? Oh dear, uh, what is... Where, where's now my, my maneuver notice over there? That's interesting. Okay, um, yeah, it's easy to get into a, a polar orbit. Guess I have to go for something like this. Um, it's okay when the orbit is quite high. This is, I like to be in a very high orbit. 
Okay, like this, I would go directly through the moon's pool. Then I would only need to uh, basically make sure that I'm aligned with the orbit of the moon. But I think this is doable. I hope that this is doable. All right, 70 meters per second of delta V are required for this. Sounds good. Yeah, I think this is this is a good way. This is a good start. Maybe I can even change a little bit the the direction of the trajectory. And I think uh, this is a mid cross. Oh yeah, it's a mid cross correction burn. I can execute this burn right now. So let's do this. All right. Easy. Easy and stop. Okay. Okay, we we did a bit too much. This means I need to do what? I need to do No. No. Yes. Okay, I need to do a retrograde burn apparently. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this very, very easy. And just a bit more. All right, this is perfect. Great. All right. Now, the communication satellite is on a good trajectory towards uh, to the moon. And let's make sure that the solar panels are facing toward the sun. All right, we have achieved a lot. We have um, two missions heading for the moon. We have the communication modules in Kerbin orbit. So next time we can deploy the communication modules, we can um, set up our communication satellite in a polar orbit around the moon. And um, yeah, we can hopefully fly out the supply ship Mark V to the moon. So I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you will be joining me in the next episode. Until then, my name is Abby. See you.